Hey, Ed Ballou here, standing in front of Burner Botanical Garden just outside Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We have a great project that we're getting ready to start up here. What we're doing is we're going to do a rainwater harvesting system. We're capturing all the water off of the very roof of the building as well as the parking lot that everybody parks in. The roof itself, the total square footage is over 40,000 square feet, which is way more water than we actually need. So we're just taking one portion of it, the downspout directly behind me over here, we're going to be tapping into that. We're going to be directing the water into an underground rainwater harvesting system that's going to start out with 3,000 gallons of water. Directly behind me off to the side, the sculpture garden, that's where that first rainwater harvesting system is going to be located underneath a permeable pavement system. The key with this is the existing irrigation system has a high iron content, so they can't water everything with the traditional irrigation system because it was staining those sculptures. So by using the rainwater, it's free of all those minerals and they won't have any of those issues. So we're really solving a bunch of problems. I'm standing in the sediment trap located right outside of our outflow structure. What this is designed to do is to capture all that inflowing water that's coming off of the parking lot as well as the roof and allow sediments time to settle out. So what we want to do is we want to capture that water, send it into a constructed wetland filter first, allows a further filtration of all, this, uh, of all the incoming water, and then we're going to capture the water and store it in a large 20,000 gallon reservoir located just downstream over here. We're standing about 100 feet downstream of where that inflow water is coming into the whole system. Right beneath me, we're going to have a 20,000 gallon reservoir. It's going to be approximately 25 feet wide, 40 feet long, and 6 feet deep. This is going to be lined with an EPDM rubber membrane. It's going to be filled with the Aquablox water matrix units. That's going to provide that structural void space for us that's going to hold all this water into position. We're going to have a series of cascading waterfalls and a stream-like effect that's going to twist and turn its way down this natural hillside. This is going to provide a beautiful vantage point for all the incoming visitors coming into the garden, as well as create a little bit of extra habitat that they don't currently have here. This is an arboretum. So they specialize in plant material, but what they don't have is they don't have bog plants, they don't have wetland plants and native uh, riparian vegetation. That's one of those things that we're going to add to this system. So this naturalistic stream that we're going to create is going to be filled with lush vegetation, native and indigenous, right to this area. All right, we are really making some progress here. It's just after lunchtime. We got our hole dug. We got 700 aqua blocks built directly behind me. Our sand is being delivered. We're starting to lay that down in the base. Things are really moving along. Let's hop down in the bottom to see what we have here. Digging out our pit for our snorkels and centipedes. That's going to house the submersible pumps. 42,000 gallons of water per hour is going to be recirculating through this 20,000 gallon storage. We're at the south end of the building in the sculpture garden area. Right behind me you see the facility itself. We're capturing water off of the roof and we're funneling it down through the downspouts which are going to be directed into a 3,000 gallon reservoir. Underneath this patio is a 3,000 gallon reservoir. We have a foot of open graded gravel and then we have the brick itself on top. As incoming rainfall falls on top of the brick, it soaks down through the joints and will help replenish this entire system. Behind me you can see our 23,000 gallon reservoir that's capturing all the water off the parking lot and the roof. We have 700 Aquablox water matrix units installed. We have our excavation is 20 foot wide and 60 feet long and it's 6 feet deep over at that far end. Alright, we're standing at the base of the stream. This is where all the water is going to come down off of the parking lot and enter into our system. Over here on my left, we have our snorkel and centipede units housing the two submersible pumps. Each one of those pumps is going to deliver the water through the six inch piping that you see. That piping goes around the back side. The first set of pipes is going to go into our constructed wetland filter where the water comes into contact with the root zones of the aquatic plants once they're planted. The second pump is going to deliver the water all the way to the top right next to the cart path. So as visitors coming in, they're going to see this little trickle of water starting out. And then as you come downstream, we're going to have more and more water added to that stream system. Day eight, project completed. We just fired up the pumps and it looks awesome. The other day when we, were, when we were working here, we had a rainstorm that came through out of nowhere. All that rain came off the parking lot, filled up our basin. 
as you can see, all that foam on the surface of the water, that's coming from the rainwater because the rainwater picked up pollutants off of the roof, the parking lot, that stuff we want to try to get rid of. So that foamy process, that foam that's on there is coming from the action of the waterfalls as it infuses the water with oxygen, helps break down all that stuff. What you're looking at is a fully functioning ecosystem here. Back off to my left, we have a constructed wetland filter. It has a couple of our snorkel centipede units where we're sending all that high velocity water down into the bottom. From there, the water goes up through different grades of gravel where it comes into contact with specially designed plants. These aquatic plants have root systems that grow down into that gravel bed and they will help absorb all the excess nutrients and trap some sediments that are, that are caught in the water system. That's the main filtration. From that point, you can see as it re-enters the stream, it helps oxygenate the water. Do you remember back on day one when I was standing in this very spot holding up a bunch of sediments? That sediment trap area, that's what this has been transformed into. This area has totally been transformed. We have a much more efficient design. We have a series of cascading waterfalls that are hiding that 24 inch diameter pipe. We actually have waterfalls going directly over the top of them. During a heavy rain event, we will have more water flowing through that pipe system. All of our sediments and things are gonna get trapped right down below in this area. We have an easy clean out method with a snorkel and centipede down below the sediments will settle out. You could actually see kind of the turbulence happening down in there. Just a very slight movement of water. All of that turbulence allows sediments to fall out. And that's the whole name of the game when we're talking about trying to capture and filter stormwater runoff. This is why we're here. The rain is coming down and we're gonna capture it all. Off of the roof, off of the parking lot, we're gonna capture it, we're gonna filter it, we're reusing it for irrigation and creating habitat. This is an awesome opportunity for us to showcase how we can all do our part. I want to thank you again for being part of the Burner Botanical Garden Project.